Hey guys, how's it going? Rage Lion Pirate here. Um, so, I wanted to do a series of Stamplot talks for a while, um, but real life obligations have been a little bit crazy, so I've been basically just enjoying myself playing. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it in a couple of different videos. So this way, if you don't like one particular piece of information or what have you, you can go and just look at the other videos for your exact answer. The main thing I want to cover in the first video is f basic friction within the class and uh, just kind of talk about some skills, what actually pertains to everything you do out there. Because in like some ways, it's kind of like half of a class right now in the current state of the game, just the way passives and everything work. So, um, we'll cover that, and then in the next video or following videos, uh, I don't want to just outright give you a build. I want you to think about what you want to do, weapon types that you want to use, and be able to build effectively for that. So I'll kind of give you some, some ideas of what you can do in that respect, as well as you know, sets that more align with that type of methodology. So let's start by going just into skills in general. So everybody knows you got your Adrix Spear skill line. Uh, we'll take a look at the passives over here. Um, so Piercing Spear is with an Adrix Spear ability slotted. Increase for critical damage 10% and damage to blocking targets by 10%. Alright, not a bad passive, cool, but you need to have an Age of Spear ability slotted, so... This, this, this entire set of passives is really gonna be, like, your only set of passives that work at all. Alright, so they change Spear Wall, gain minor protection for 3 seconds, reducing damage taken by 8%. That's wonderful, but they took our minor protection away from everything else. So you have to use an Age of Spear ability every 3 seconds to even get minor protection anymore, which is okay on the offense, but completely useless for us on defense. Burning Light, you know, it's your proc that happens on your Age of Spear abilities. 25% chance to deal it. It's got a cooldown of a half second. Balance warrior, uh, balance warrior increase weapon damage by 6% and spell resistance by 2640. So that's cool and all, but as you'll see later, it's a little weird just because we have abilities that don't scale off of weapon damage. So let's just conquer this particular wonkiness, if you will. So Burning Light. 25% chance to deal physical or magic damage, whichever is higher. Alright. So, it can proc off any of these abilities here. Alright. As a Stamplar, unless you're in like PvE maybe, you're not using Spear Shards because the damage is pathetic for you to use it. So, it's not going to proc off of that. So that's one class ability. You're not using the Gab Closer because they're both Magicka and we're stamina based so I'm not going to proc off of that because it's also grab damage um, all the sun shield morphs same scenario plus with the way they changed a couple of things it the sun shield ability and its morphs are fairly useless to us so right off the bat that's three skills within your main damage damage skill line that you're not using to proc one of your passives. All right. Binding Javelin. The skill itself is okay. It's reflectable. It's dodgeable. It's blockable. I mean, it's cool that it has a 41 meter range, so you can knock someone down forever away, but it really doesn't help us. And it's just, I don't know where, why they think it's godlike strength, but... That's not a particularly wonderful tooltip for that far away. Biting jabs, uh, probably the main reason anyone plays Stamplar. Uh, if you're not using biting jabs, then, you know, I, I don't understand rightfully why you play Stamplar. I mean, but either way. So, this is cool and all, 
launch a relentless assault, striking enemies in front of you four times for your aged spear, spear deals, blah, 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 physical damage, the closest enemy, and 14, 29 physical damage to all others. Alright, so here's the host of things wrong with this ability and how it functions with Adric Spear as a skill line. Alright, so for one, it's an AoE. Well, it's a cone, so it finds itself as an AoE. So, that higher physical damage that you deal to the closest enemy to you even though that's a single target like bonus it's still mitigated by evasion because the entire ability itself is an AOE so if you're thinking like just so if it's 4k to the closest target battle spear is dropping it to 2k and then 20% of that is being taken off due to evasion before we even start anything because even though it's a higher single target tooltip it's attached to an AOE ability so evasion renders it much much lower than it would be so that's why if you're playing you'll find some random ass people out there that you'll do like an 800 jab to and it's just um, really really irritating um, so the final strike is gonna give a really big snare of 70% for two seconds so Another thing about biting jabs is it's 8 by 6 meters in its little frontal cone thing or whatever, and that's per jab that goes out. Because that was that's supposed to help with strafing or moving targets or what have you. But it sends out its little beacon in 8 by 6 for each jab. So one jab goes out, it looks for player in there, delivers damage. Second jab goes out, looks for player in there, does its, its, its damage. Cool, but the problem with that lies is like server latency is actually a thing that you have to worry about in this game so especially with like locational skills it tends to be extremely buggy come lag and sometimes you're just jabbing at nothing even with the slightest amount of latency another thing is if you do your first jab and you hit the target then they're going to start dodge rolling or getting all crazy. So now you're trying to hit them. Maybe you hit another jab. Maybe you miss a jab. But then you have to, to even make use of that snare. You have to tag an opponent that's already trying to dodge your ability and has been for the past second. So that further makes it irritating. The cool thing we have about it is it gives us major savagery pretty easily. So hooray for that, I suppose. And then the channel time, which I know they're changing down or whatever, but the channel time is currently the skill is longer than a global cooldown. So you're already behind the power curve as far as what you can do. Now, biting jabs is a fun ability despite all that. It can do some decent damage. It's just the damage it does is so all over the place um, because of aforementioned items. Also, in its current state, on all these abilities, so you got one, two, three, that the damage is AoE, and then you have one, two, that are single target, except for one of the more so focused charges, like a little AoE. But so of the of the skills in the skill line, three of which you're not using one of which you're using is dodgeable, reflectable, and blockable. One of which, even if, you know, it's f it's four jabs. So even if, let's say the jab tooltip is 4K, played out over four jabs is 12K. It's not like surprise attack where if like, your tooltip was 12K, you're just hitting with all of that 12K. You have to aim your spammable, which is something that you really don't have to do elsewhere in the game save maybe Warden's uh, Shulks. So after you aim your spammable, there's really no guarantee. You could have 4k damage. You could have 8k damage. You could have 12k damage. Like there's no, there's a huge amount of disparity between how much damage you're actually going to deliver 
and all that comes based off of you being able to land all your jo all your jabs and that's without any type of initial snare or anything like that so when you do work with using jabs you have to make sure like that you're jabbing at the right times and not just running around spamming abilities like crazy but anyway like i was saying so about the aoe burning light is proccing basically off an aoe ability but burning light itself is dodgeable so that's why you're seeing if you'll jab someone you'll see like the dodged prompt come up over their head or whatever they're effectively dodging an ability that's proccing off an undodgeable ability so it's already rough going in regards to that so so you want to just play like a ransack bash cancel build or a reverb build or something like that you're kind of only using balanced warrior because if you're relying on just weapon sources you're not making use of the age of spear ability because let's be honest no one's using empowering sweep on you're not making use of your minor protection and you're not using burning light so if you don't use an already ridiculous ability situation with biting jabs you move you lose three passives you know i mean unless you're using just javelin or something like that but if you're using sword and board unless you're running like jack daniel's ghost build there's no reason for you to have javelin on and then there's Balanced Warrior. So you're getting 6% weapon damage. Whole skill line, 6% weapon damage. It's, it's going to Dawn's Wrath because that one's even more laughable. So none of these skills here have stamina morphs. None of them do meaningful damage, healing, or anything worthwhile to you really as a stamina character. Except for Power of the Light. I guess Nova maybe in the weird situation where you're in a giant group and you want to put Nova down, but it's magic damage, so it doesn't really go with the whole Stamplar kit. Now, Power of the Light, it's love-hate, so Power of the Light is w takes way too long. It's like six seconds is forever. So six seconds to do 20% of 21... 085 as far as the maximum copy damage and you get minor fracture so like good things about power of the light is that first little that first little initial cast is undodgeable so excuse me you can cast that and that goes based off of your weapon damage and your pen and whatnot but then you have to fill this up with no CC that goes through block or dodge or reflect to get even 20% of your maximum copy damage done to target. Then on top of that, it can't crit. Then on top of that, it only scales with your maximum resource. So that's another irritating factor. And then if we look at the passives, I really only have these in here just because I think I was blindly just clicking stuff when in a respec but this increases the duration of abilities that we don't use this gives us three ultimate over six seconds <coughs> so basically getting three ultimate at the end of every power of the light cooldown uh, illuminate helps other people when you cast power of the light so that's cool um and that increased spell damage for yourself really isn't going to do anything meaningful and then the only passive like for a very long time if i wanted to make sure that i had some extra skill points aside like this is the only passive that i had unlocked in this entire tree so and it just reduces magic stamina ultimate cost by four percent so one passive one skill and sometimes i run without power of the light so literally this entire skill line is relegated down to just one passive 
So if I'm not running Power of the Light, I'm running like a different style build, maybe with like Dizzy, Swing, and Execution or whatnot, I can literally remove all these passives and this skill and only spend two skill points in this entire skill line. Yep. Let's go on to Restoring Light. So, occasionally run Remembrance. Nowadays, there's better options. No point of running this because it costs a lot of magicka and it's not going to heal you anywhere close to what you need to be healed. No point in running this. Uh, repentance. So I like Repentance. I still like Repentance. Um, sorry, I was taking a sip of coffee. So I still like Repentance. It's nice now that I don't have to like constantly race other Templars to repent a corpse. Or have other Templars get irritated at me to repent to when I repent the course before them. But, unfortunately, given the way they also changed Rune and just other general changes in the game, like racial passives, etc., and the way you can build nowadays, it's probably the most expendable tool in this kit. So, if you're even just looking at abilities here, so can't use, won't use, don't use, unless you're building like some weird hybrid with Palinol's back bar. Can't use, don't use, won't use, because it's not going to heal you worth anything. Now relegated down to being expendable. And then there's Purify. Don't get me wrong, Purify is nice. Um, this is also why that minor sorcery isn't really going to do anything, because you're looking at 686 health every two seconds. So... 10% extra spell damage is going to raise that to what, like 692 health every two seconds? So it doesn't mean anything. So Stamplar really lacks any type of ability that can stop damage, like damage mitigation up front. So like Purify is nice in the fact that you have five effects taken off. However, in today's current situation with the game, you either have like two effects or like 13 effects and nowhere in between, like, it doesn't matter because <laughs> you, you can remove them and as quickly as you can remove them, there's, it's that quickly to put it back on. Just think about, so let's look at just a Dragon, a dragon Knight, Stamina Dragon Knight, or just basically any class. Um, so, if they're running dual wield axes, with say double dot poisons and they do um, like a medium attack weave into a venom claw or a medium attack weave into rending slashes let's just do that because that's like kind of the same across everywhere else so poisons proc that's two effects on you all right rending slashes bleed rending slashes snare so that's four effects right there and that's just with a simple medium or heavy attack I feel like I'm missing something in regards to that, too. Oh, yeah, sorry. And then the fifth one, Twin Blade and Blunt Bleed. So that's just one medium attack with a Rending Slash cancel with Poisons on. And that's five effects just right then and there. Not counting literally anything else that's in the world. So five effects now is literally just a drop in the bucket, unfortunately. I mean, it still gives you the leg up as far as dealing with it. Maybe, but if I play Stam DK, my heals are so high that, I, like, I don't, it's like, it, the, the purge doesn't, it, it's a wash, basically. Um, and then even then, I can still do a little bit more on Stam DK, what with ulties and whatnot. Uh, Stam Nightblade, when I play that, like, literally all I have to do is hit Cloak, and not only can they not see me, but my health can actually go back up, because... All the incoming damage is basically stopped. And then I can come back out and start attacking again. Like, you know, and nothing really happened. Stam Warden, they're tanky enough in their own right. And then even like Stam Sorg's got Dark Deal. So, as far as, and even Streak and higher mobility and what, however, Extended Ritual, as nice as it is, it's just, it's honestly, it's outclassed. Um, by a lot of other scenarios. Plus, on top of that, it's, it's completely reactive. Um, you have to have five effects on you to use this ability, and with how easy they are to just get right back on. 
it doesn't really. It's it's not pulling as much weight as it used to in the past, especially with heels being gutted the way they are. So then restoring focus. So like this ability is great. So it's basically the stamina mirror to the channel focus. They removed minor vitality and minor protection from it, which really sucks. And in a way, I'd almost rather we just go somewhat back to that. But it's your armor buff, and then you get sustained from it. So it's because of this change that now Repentance, which used to be your main uh, resource management along with heavy attacks, like this kind of rendered Repentance a little bit lower down as far as necessity. But either way, good skill. So let's take a look at the passives. Alright, so increasing healing effects from only our restoring light abilities by 12%. Alright, that's that's not vigor. <laughs> that's not rally, which we are pretty much cornered into using. So this doesn't heal. This only heals when things are dead. And this heals for 686. Cool. Pass that does nothing for us. Sacred ground. Okay, so this one's going to be the thing that's that snares everyone for thirty percent for some weird reason. They decided to put that in there. Um, then it's going to give you minor mending. Minor mending is our only heal increase that works for the heals that we as a stamina templar actually use, which is rally and vigor. So again, the only passive really that you need to have in this tree. So, yeah. Light Weaver, Christmas Durations, a bunch of things that we don't use. It's great that on our ulti, that already gives us major protection and heals us a bunch. We get a bunch more physical and uh, spell resistance while we're locked in place and can't move. So, And you only get that while you're channeling, though, so awesome. And then, you know, in case you want to resurrect or, you know, you're really low on soul gems and you can only buy empty ones. I guess this passive is cool. So, <clears throat> let's go down the line. One, two, three, four, six. All right, so of the, of the 10 skills in this entire thing, you need one passive and two abilities. Repentance, only two and a half abilities. If you decide to play with Power of the Light, it doesn't hurt to have this passive. But if you don't play with Power of the Light, you only need one passive in this entire skill line. If you're not using this skill, fighting jabs for your damage, then you only need one passive unlocked. So that's what I kind of mean by like we're like a half a class now. Because um, if you're using sword and board, <coughs> you're better off using reverb for your CC. If you're using dual wield, I don't know how you're getting damage on target without using biting jabs. If you're using two hand and bow, unless you're doing like a crit rush build or something like that where you poison inject your crit rush in after a javelin and whatnot that'd really be the only reason why you have javelin on there but not jabs um, but for the rest of us you're you're running primarily on three passives because you remember you don't have a CC that goes through block dodge roll or anything like that or goes through block so the only way that this like damage done to blocking targets is really making a difference is if you run bleeds. Um, and that critical damage doesn't increase your critical heals anymore. So kind of lower on the totem pole as far as healing. So whole class, three, uh, three class passives are particularly relevant. Which is cool because Stamplars are very easy to grind what would steal Tornado and Repentance being a thing. And then you got to do Undaunted and Fighter's Guild and all that stuff. And you need to go get Sky Shards. So you can get a Stamplar from like nothing to operational in probably the shortest time. Because you don't need to use most of your class passives. But 
I know that had a very bleak outlook to it. I just wanted to go over kind of the, like I said, the, the main friction areas regarding Stamplar and uh, the problems that are going on with the class. And if all that's, if all that still doesn't deter you from playing Stamplar, uh, definitely in the next vid go over um, builds and playstyle choices and whatnot. So you either really like Spears, really like the color yellow, or really just want to be a Stamina Templar because, you know, you want to get angry occasionally. Um, I'll see you guys in the next vid. Thanks for watching.